Hi, welcome to yoga. I'm Joanne. Thanks for practicing with me today. Let's get started today in a comfortable seat. So you're going to elevate your hips if you need to or sit on a chair and then lift the flesh away from your sitting bones. And then you want to find a little length through the spine as we drop the shoulders away from the ears. Hands can be palms down or up, whatever's more comfortable. So down is a little more grounding if you need that, if your energy is a little chaotic and facing up is a little more receptive than open. So whatever feels right for your energy today. And then once you find that nice length through the spine, dropping the shoulders, retract your chin just a little bit to lengthen through the back of the neck. Let the eyes gently close and allow the lips to part slightly so the jaw is relaxing. You might take this time at the beginning of the practice to set an intention or a dedication for yourself by repeating it three times to anchor that dedication or intention into your subconscious mind for the remainder of the practice. And then begin to bring a little bit of awareness into your breath. And in yoga, we tend to um, inhale and exhale through the nose in order to cleanse and warm the breath and also to release anything we don't need with the exhale. So you're going to Bring that awareness into the belly. We really want to expand the belly as we inhale. And move the breath through the entire body. So three-dimensional breath breathing, big diaphragmatic breath as we inhale all the way up to the tops of the lungs, bringing the collarbone up a little bit. Expanding. And then as we exhale, we soften and reverse the wave. And we just let go of anything. We don't need tension, negative thoughts any thoughts about what we might be doing later in the day or what happened earlier in the day. So just let it all go. And with each out breath, we release and let go. With each inhale, we expand. We grow a little bit taller. Soften and release as you exhale. And this should feel effortless. Effortless, less effort. I don't even, I can't even say that word right now. It should feel easy. <laughs> Let's go with that. So, if it feels challenging to find that full deep breath, see if you can just let go of the idea of it and just breathe as deeply as you can. Sometimes it'll get stuck or you might feel a little constricted in the ribs and that's normal if you're new to the practice. So try not to put too much thought into it. Just let it go and just breathe deeply. If you can find a little lightness to the inhale as well. Take a couple more breaths here. So continuing to expand with each inhale. And just let go and soften with each exhale.
I'll take a nice deep breath in together. And as you exhale, just sigh it out through the mouth. <sighs> Let go again. Let's do that one more time. Deep breath in. Sigh it out audibly through the mouth. <sighs> We're going to do that one more time with the lion's breath. We're going to stick the tongue out and look up. So deep breath in. Again, audible sigh, open the mouth wide, look up. Ah. And one more of those. Inhale deeply. Lion's breath out. Ah. Great, relax. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, drop the chin to the chest. Feel a nice stretch across the back of the neck. Into the shoulders and the traps. And then just gently rock side to side. Keep breathing as you move. As always, if anything's painful, don't do it or modify it so it's not painful. And slowly and gently opening up through the neck and shoulders. Make sure the shoulders aren't hunching up to meet the ear as you move side to side. And then we'll take a couple circles. So we're gonna inhale, continue the journey now all the way around. We're gonna lift the chin toward the sky. Be gentle with the back of your neck. And if you're coordinating with your breath, you're gonna inhale as you open your circle. And exhale as you close your circle. Take one more in this direction. Great, you're gonna pause and we'll reverse the circle. So we'll take three in the opposite direction. Modifying if you need to. Keep breathing as you move. Really coordinating the breath and the practice is going to help really open things up for you. So I really encourage you to use the breath as a tool. We'll pause and with the chin to the chest. We're going to take the head upright and then release the arms by the side. Let's bring a little intention, squeeze the shoulders up by the ears in a big circle, squeeze the shoulder blades down the back. Again, inhale, squeeze, a little tension. Exhale around, and one more time, squeeze it up and back. Great, settle the shoulders down, lifting up through the core, nice and tall, chin retracts just a little bit. Good, and then we're gonna take the arms out, inhale, let them float up by the side without creating any tension in the shoulders. See if you can keep the shoulders relaxed, pull the hands out. So we're creating length, Arms are parallel to the floor. We're gonna draw the fingers toward the face, feeling that in the bottom of your arm, all the way through up to the armpit. Again, relax the shoulders, and then pull the fingers down and in. Good, and then you're just gonna take one arm, bring the fingers up. So you've got one up and one down. And then we're gonna switch. So we're just gonna alternate. Great. And then we're going to follow with the head, the hand that goes down. So you're just going to tilt the ear toward the hand that comes down. Come back up and go to the other side. So just gently side to side. Good. And a little flossing for our nerves in the arms, the meridian nerve. So we're being gentle. If anything hurts again, you don't do it, or you modify. So one more time, side to side. Great, bring the head upright, reach the hands out once more. And then just wiggle your fingers around. So both fingers, imagine playing a piano, activating the fingers, shoulders stay relaxed, neck is tall, head is loose. 
wiggling your fingers move a little faster. Awesome, breathing. Good, begin to rotate the wrists now. You can continue to wiggle the fingers a little bit. Rotating in one direction will reverse, go the other way. Your arms might be starting to get a little bit warm. And that's typical and normal and okay, as long as there's no pain. If you can continue, good, reach out. Good, and then settle the arms down by the side. Shake them out a little bit. Good, inhale, sweep the arms back behind you as you open the chest, lift up, catch a wrist. We're gonna reach up and over, keep your hips grounded. Open the chest, breathe here, deep breath in and out. Inhale, reach up tall, switch the grasp, lift up and over. Stay grounded in those hips, chest open. Deep breath. Good, inhale, lift. As you release the arms, you're gonna pull them back behind you without arching in your back. Keep the torso neutral. Reach back, open the chest. Awesome, let's shrug the shoulders here, up and down the back. Excellent. Rest your hands on your knees. We're gonna do a little seated cat-cow. So we're gonna inhale. As I inhale, I'm pulling my chest through. I'm squeezing my shoulder blades back and I'm looking up and I'm leaning forward a little bit here on my sitting bones. So I'm shifting forward. And then as I exhale, I'm rounding my back. Drop your chin to your chest and lean back on your sitting bones a little bit. So you're really exaggerating the movement. Inhale, open. Shifting, exhale, round. This should feel good. Inhale, open. If you find any pinching in the lower back, just don't go that far. Exhale, round. Inhale, open. Exhale, round. Good. And then let's pick up the pace a little bit. Inhale, exhale. Just a little faster, more movement. Good, let's do one more and come back to your seated position. Great. And then let's switch to cross the legs because we've been in that situation for a bit. <clears throat> so just change it so it feels a little weird. And we're gonna do one more thing here seated. Inhale, reach one arm up, walk your hand over, open the chest, and then soften both shoulders. Soften both elbows and then turn the torso toward me and reach the elbow out. Reach as far across in front of you as you can. Stretch both arms out and inhale through the other side. So we say relax in the shoulders and the elbows. Good. Again, bow and reach. So we're just reaching as far as we can, creating a nice fluid motion and softness in the joints. So let your breath guide you. Exhale, inhale up. Exhale as you reach and inhale as you lift. So making this a moving meditation for you with the breath, see if you can coordinate with the breath. Exhale, reach, inhale, lift. So the pace of your breathing will dictate the pace of the movement. Exhale, inhale. So you might go at a different pace for me and that's totally fine. <clears throat> Take one more round. And release. Inhale on the second side. And then you're going to lift yourself up and lower the arm. Let's shrug the shoulders here. And release. Excellent. So let's um, come into a tabletop posture on the hands and knees. Do some cat cows to warm the spine up a little bit more. And I should have said at the beginning of the class, um, grab, have a strap nearby or handy, then your blanket, of course, or whatever props you might need. You might have blocks as well. So we're coming to all fours. 
Brighten the fingers on the mat, inside of the elbow, forward, soften the elbow. Knees under hips, be active on the floor. And then engage your belly so you're not just hanging out, your shoulders are hunched up by the ears. So we wanna press the mat away from us. Engage the core a little bit so your back is nice and flat. And you're not just sagging the belly, right? You're here. Good, and then we'll find some movement from this nice firm structure. We're gonna inhale, send the belly toward the floor. We're reaching the tailbone out and long and the top of the head up and away. So we're lengthening. And then we're exhale, rounding. Good, inhale, open. Exhale, round. Couple more. If you're new to the practice, don't worry about your breathing. It'll come in time. I mean, it's pretty easy to follow along here when we're doing some things like this, but I don't want you to stress about it. Let's make sure you're breathing. So we're gonna come back to a neutral spine. And then we're gonna do a little free form. So you're gonna kind of close the eyes and let your intuition guide you. So you're gonna shift forward, you might come through lateral flexion, like making a C shape with the spine and then pushing back over your hips. Coming up on the other side, maybe a little more lateral flexion. And you might round and you might tuck. So again, I encourage you to kind of close the eyes and just move as big as you can around from your tabletop position. Keep the breath moving. If you're coordinating, we're exhaling back, inhaling forward. And we can play with different positions and angles. And then let's reverse the direction we're going. A few times. Just trying to kind of move our spine in all possible directions. And then we'll slow it down and meet in our tabletop position. Great, so from here, we're gonna walk our knees behind our hips just a tiny bit so that they're a little bit back from your hip points. You might take your hands a little wider if you're real tight in the chest and shoulders or keep them under your shoulders. What we're gonna do now is bend at the elbow and come down bringing the chest right between the hands. So you're gonna engage your core as you lower, hover down. This is awkward S pose, as you can see and feel. And then we're gonna let the legs slide behind us, tops of the feet are on the floor, and inhale, tuck your tone, draw your shoulder blades back, pull the mat toward you a little bit to draw your heart forward, looking long in front of the mat. So we're not looking up, we're here, creating lots of space in the back of the neck and breathing into your belly. So we're really not pushing up here. We're using the extensor muscles in our back here to, to lift the pose. So we're working those muscles and everything else is relaxed. Let's take another breath here. Good, release the chest and chin. We're gonna tuck the toes and stretch the bottoms of our feet next. So you're gonna push yourself up. You could inch your knees up if you want, and then press them out away from you, a little reverse push up if you want a challenge. Or you can just shift yourself back. And so notice my toes are tucked under, and then I'm shifting my hips back over toward my heels. Doesn't matter how far you go, you can place something behind your knees if you need support there. And then you're gonna maybe relax toward either a block or the mat. Left the forehead. And then I want you to breathe into the bottoms of your feet. So nice big stretch here for the bottoms of the feet. If you can feel all 10 toes tucked under. And this might be a little bit intense. Again, if there's pain, back out a little bit. So 
We're gonna slowly inhale, come back up, release the toes. You might tap them out a little bit. Great, and then from here, tuck your toes again, and we're gonna come up for downward dog. So take your time, make sure before you come up, your inside of your elbow is forward. That's gonna bring the shoulders into the back. And then we're gonna just lift the hips slowly, press them up and back. You relax the head between the arms, pedal your feet out, walk your dog. So one leg bends and then the other, just starting to warm up the calves and hamstrings. Breathing. Great. And then from your downward dog, we're just gonna take a nice, easy stroll up to the front of the mat. So we're gonna come all the way up to standing forward bend, measure about two fists between the feet or a hip width apart, bend the knees, hands come down, forehead tucks. You might shake the head a little yes, no, you might even shift the weight on the feet, lift and fan the toes, nice firm, solid foundation in your feet that's relaxed. And then let the arms hang, tuck your tailbone and roll up all the way, nice and slow to the top of your mat. When you get to the top, shrug your shoulders to open the chest, bring the hands by the side. Imagine holding heavy suitcases in the hands so the shoulders move away from your ears. Great, and then shift the weight a little bit even on the feet. And then you wanna make sure your tailbone is neutral. So I have a tendency in my back to arch, my lower back. So I have to be mindful that my pelvis is neutral and my hip points and my whole pelvic bowl is like carrying water and it wouldn't spill out. So be very mindful of that. So engage the core, lift up nice and tall, neutral in your pelvis. From here, send the arms behind you to open your chest without arching the back. So that happens a lot. Keep the back neutral, lift the arms. Feel that nice stretch in the chest. Exhale, swan dive, pull the arms back, soften the knees, hinge at the hip and fold into forward bend. Forehead tucks, just see where you are. You might be bent, you might be straight, wherever you are is good. Inhale into a flat back pose, lengthen your spine. You breathe in, exhale as you fold. We're gonna plant the hands right next to the feet. Take a giant step back with one leg, I'm using my right leg back first, so whatever side you wanna work on is fine. That front knee is over the heel, back knee is behind the hip. You can adjust the back knee, forward or back, depending on how tight you are. Here, this is a constant, and then we're gonna lift, scissor the legs toward the midline to find that neutral pelvis again and send the arms up. So you should feel a stretch here, and breathe. You might even tuck your tail on just a little bit to accentuate that stretch. Shoulders are relaxed. Take a breath in here. Feet are nice and rooted. We're gonna rainbow the arms toward the front knee side to accentuate that stretch in the back leg a little bit. So reaching up and over. Keep lifting out of your hips. Deep breath here, you'll feel that a little more. Slowly inhale, come back up to center. Good, flip the hands forward. Imagine painting a wall, slowly lower the hands down to frame your front foot. And then walk yourself back, lift the front foot, open your chest. You might use blocks here if there's, if you feel really um, uh, like you're rounding a lot. So we wanna have a nice open chest. So if you need props to find that space, Feel free to do that. Foot is flexed, feeling this in that front leg. We're breathing, we're pulling our front sitting bone back and our heart forward. Let's take one more deep breath here, softening into your stretch, no tension. I mean, you might feel the pull, but it shouldn't be uncomfortable. You should be able to breathe deeply, fold, walk your hands forward, frame the foot, tuck the back toes. Lifting the knee, send your hips up, step it back, downward dog. Let's engage our muscles from downward dog. Inhale, 
float into plank pose nice and mindfully, nice and slowly. So the slower it is, I think the harder it is, the more tension you have to put into the action. Take a breath. Drop your knees on the exhale. Chest and uh, chin come down, engage your core. Slide into your cobra. Draw the chest forward, shoulders back. Glue the feet. Maybe lift the hands, take a breath. Good, release the chin and chest. Tuck your toes. You might inch up and press up for a little more challenge, or you might just come up and float yourself to downward dog. Really mindfully. So we're gonna bend our knees and gaze forward. Whichever leg you stepped back will come forward. So see if you can step it forward. If the foot doesn't reach the front, you can just simply pull it forward. Make sure you have that good square alignment as you drop the back knee and pull the toes, adjust that leg if you need. Scissor your legs, find the midline, lift up. You might just lift first, check your pelvis, add the arms. Firm footing. Good, breathe here. As you're ready, tip the arms to the front knee side, rainbow over. Find a nice deep breath here in the stretch. We'll inhale back through center. Beautiful, exhale, flip the hands, slowly paint a wall forward in front of you as you frame that front foot. And then walk it back, tip the toes up. Open your chest. Pull the sitting bone back as the heart stretches forward. A couple deep breaths here, softening and relaxing into your stretch. Make sure you're not straining the neck or the shoulders. Nice deep breathing. Good, one more breath here. Good, and then slowly walk it forward. Plant the hands, we're gonna tuck the back toes. Lift your knee, let's step back to downward dog again. Maybe pedal the feet. Slowly find your way to a plank position. Again, hugging the muscles around the bones. Move slowly and mindfully. Deep breath in, exhale, drop the knees, the chest, the chin. We're gonna slide into our cobra again. And then we're gonna move into sphinx pose. So feet are glued. From here, slide the elbows out. Hands are parallel. You might need a little wider stance if you're real tight. And the idea here is we're gonna press up and out of the shoulders here. So the neck, the neck is long, looking in front of you again. Tuck your tailbone. You shouldn't feel any pinching in your lower back. So we're really pulling the heart forward, lifting up and out of the back. Hips are still grounded. Nice deep breaths here. Take one more breath. Great, slide the hands back next to your chest, under your shoulders. Tuck your toes, optional, you can come up, inch up. Press the mat away from you if you want more of a challenge. Slowly make your way to downward dog. Excellent, we're gonna, you can walk or step or hop. We'll meet in forward fold. See where you are, check in. Roll yourself up, inhale. Coming back to the top of the mat in mountain pose, open the chest, neutral pelvis, inhale, sweep the arms up, back behind you. Exhale, soften the knees, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale as you lengthen your spine parallel to the floor. And exhale as you bow.
Lay your hands. We're going to step both legs back this time, coming into plank position. Good. And then send your hips up for downward dog. Good. So from downward dog here, we're going to challenge ourselves a little bit. If you want, you can skip this if it doesn't work for you. I'm going to keep one leg down and raise the other leg. But I, while I do that, I want to keep my shoulders even. So I'm trying not to torque my spine here. So we're just lifting that leg straight up. So we're not opening and twisting anything. Just lift up, send the heel back. Good. And then you're going to bend at the knee. So now if you want to turn that leg up and back, you can open the hips a little bit. Try to keep the shoulders square. You're going to take the bent knee up between, bring your nose and knee together, round your spine. And then pull that bent leg all the way up and plant it between your hands for pigeon. Send the back leg straight behind you. So a little fun challenge to move slowly to get into the pose, engaging the core bit. If this bothers your knee, you'll take figure four on the back as an alternate, which I'll show in a second. If you're in the pigeon, this the front leg is bent, your knees between your hands, and your right knee is, if your right knee is forward, is near your right wrist, and the left ankle is near the left wrist. Your back leg is straight. We're not sickling or turning our ankle nice and straight. And your hip points are equidistant to the floor. So we're not torquing our back. We're not turning sideways like this. So make sure that's happening. Inhale, open your chest. Let's take a deep breath here. And slowly walk yourself down wherever you wanna be. So you could stack fists and rest on the forehead. You might stay here if this is pretty deep. You might come all the way down. Wherever you are, I want you to soften your shoulders, relax your jaw. You might open your jaw wide and relax it. And then breathe into that hip. So think about this hip reaching away from your armpit. As you relax in the stretch, see if your torso is even on both sides. If you need figure four on the back, you're going to come to your back, cross one leg on top, reach through the hole, connect behind the thigh. Same stretch, different plane, easier on the knee. If you have any knee issues on either side. So we'll take a couple more breaths here. So we tend to store a lot of stress in our hips. So this is such a great pose to spend a little more time in. It gets a little more intense with the longer we hold it. But you want to, the key is to soften and let go. So keep relaxing. If you notice any tension building in the shoulders or the face, you might need to back out of the posture just a little bit. We don't want to grip and hold. So breathe nice and deep. Just unlocking stress and tension. Take one more breath cycle. And as you're ready, slowly, if you're in the pigeon, you're going to walk it back. If you're in figure four on the back, slowly transition from there too. So I'm gonna come onto my fingers here. I'm gonna draw my shoulder blades back here and I'm gonna take advantage of this position for my lungs and take a nice deep breath here. Really bring the breath, plant the hands, tuck your back toes and slowly step it back to downward dog. You might pedal the feet here a little bit. You need to release out of that stretch. Excellent. From here, we're just going to switch to the other side. So from your downward dog, check yourself out. And then when you're ready, just lift the other leg straight up and back. Again, not twisting anything, just lifting. Bending the knee in. And then maybe opening the hips. Try to keep the shoulders even. 
back your tailbone just a little bit. As you're ready, you're gonna squeeze with intention, moving, squeeze, nose and knee together. You might hover here for a moment. Slowly pull the leg up and lower it between your hands. Back leg straight, using figure four on the back if you need it on this side. Before we come down, come to your fingertips or blocks. Lift up, take a deep breath here. Exhale as you slowly make your way down for a pigeon on this side. Again, whatever position feels good for you, you might again open the jaw, releasing any tension in the neck and shoulders, soften the brow, settling into your pigeon for a few cycles of breath. And also, if you need more support in this pose under your hip, feel free to use a blanket or cushion under this hip so you have a little more support there. If it's too much, or back out wherever you need. So you can find a nice deep breath. Keep letting go. Do one more breath cycle here. Nice and slowly as you inhale, walk your hands back. Again, we'll come up on the fingertips, open the chest, looking up, take a deep breath here. Hands will plant. Tuck your back toes, slowly step back down with dog. Maybe pedal the feet. And then again, from downward dog, we'll slowly transition to plank. Take a breath here. Exhale as you drop your knees, chest and chin. Slide into your cobra. Let's transition one more time to Sphinx Pose. Elbows under shoulders, we're a little wider. Press up and out, look down. Tuck your tailbone, glue the feet. Find a nice deep breath. Great, slowly bring the hands back next to your chest. And then from here, we're just gonna push back into child's pose. You can take your knees out a little wide, rest the forehead on a mat or on the block or on the floor. And let's bring the arms around the side, just let the shoulders go. And breathe into your back. Your hands out in front of you just for a little support to slowly come up, sitting up on your heels. We're going to go ahead and swing the legs around. And then I want you to grab your strap. So, have your strap handy. Good, and then sitting up nice and tall, let's kind of stack pose for just a moment. So you could sit up on your blanket if you need. Lifting up, drop your shoulders, extending your legs out, feet can be relaxed or flexed, whatever feels better. We really want to find that length and lift up out of our hips. Stack, excuse me, stack pose. From here, we're going to inhale, sweep the arms up, 
grow tall, lift up out of the hips a little more. Soften your shoulders. Think up and over. See if you can lift up out of your hips and lengthen. Keep reaching, reaching, reaching till you can't reach anymore and just let the hands rest anywhere on the legs that they land. If you want, you could use your strap here to find that length. You don't really need the strap. You can just rest your hands anywhere they land. But if you want a little more stretch for the hamstrings, you could use a strap around your feet, lift up. So I want you to think about breathing from the tailbone up the spine through the crown of the head, creating length. Notice my shoulders are relaxed. They're not here. I'm not trying to reach my feet and rounding, but I'm here. So connect to that breath as you find space in your body. Soften with each exhale. If this hurts, don't do it. If any herniation or low back issues, this might not work for you. So you can always come out of the pose even more or skip it. Do something else. Good. We'll take one more breath here, grow tall. Exhale, soften. And then you might bow the head toward the knees. That's going to bring it into the back a bit more. So if that feels comfortable, you can do that. Keep relaxing through the shoulders. Slowly as you're ready, walk it back. Great, we're gonna bring our hands behind us, do a little counter stretch for that forward fold. Hands come under your shoulders. Fingers can point toward you or away, whichever feels better. Beginners, we're gonna bend the knees, place the feet on the floor, hip width apart, reversing a tabletop. Breathe in, exhale, push up. Head supported, don't drop it back. If you're a little more advanced, you want more of a challenge, you can keep the legs straight. Press up, reverse plank. Slowly lower down. Good. And then we're going to come all the way to the back. So you can. Have your hands on your thighs if you want to challenge with your feet and unfurl all the way to the floor. Coming out to your back. <clears throat> Bend your knees to place your feet on the floor. Hands are walking toward your heels as much as possible to move the shoulders down away from your ears. Feet are parallel and hip width apart. You might place the block between your knees if you have a tendency to splay the knees out here. A nice practice. <clears throat> Make sure the head is neutral on the floor and the gaze is straight up. And then don't turn your head when you come into the pose. I want you to keep it nice and straight so the neck is not twisted. So you're going to take a nice breath in. Exhale, press into your hands and feet nice and gently as you peel your hips up off the floor straight to the sky. You might roll your shoulders under a little further, if that's comfortable, pressing up a little higher. Deep breath into the belly at the top. Exhale, slowly lower down, one vertebra at a time. So that's the bridge. We're going to do another bridge pose. Take our time. So saddle yourself. Make sure the head is straight. As you're ready, breathe in. Exhale, push up. When you get to the top, you're going to take a nice deep belly breath in. And out. Let's stay for one more breath. Nice and slowly lower down. 
one vertebra at a time. Great, bring your arms out to a T on the floor, walk your feet out a little bit. Gently windshield wiper your legs side to side. Great, and then bring your feet back in. You're gonna grab your strap, place it across the ball of one foot, extend the leg out. I have a short strap here. So um, you're gonna bend the other leg so the foot is on the floor. Walk your hand, walk your leg up with the strap around the ball of the foot. You're gonna hold both sides of your strap. My head and shoulders are relaxed and my other foot's on the floor. So we're just gonna press the heel up as we draw the toes down. And my thigh bone, my femur bone is still anchoring into the floor. I'm not lifting it up. So we're still nice and even in the hips. Stretching the back of the leg, breathe in, often as you exhale, one more breath. Great, and then you're gonna take the strap into your right hand only, and then you're gonna Turn your whole leg out. So we're rotating the leg externally a little bit. Let the leg move away from the body a little bit. So now I feel my hips are nice and anchored into the floor here. So you're gonna take your other leg, lean into chest, hold on to it. And then we're gonna open both legs out until you feel a stretch in the groin on that extended leg. So this is a counterbalance to keep our hips and our sacrum grounding. So get to a comfortable position and then find your breath. Let's see if you can relax into it. There should be no discomfort in the back and your back should be grounded. Another breath. Each breath we're softening into our stretch a little bit further. Great. So now slowly pull both legs toward the midline. Let this leg come to the floor. Walk your foot to the edge of the mat. This leg that's in the air, you're going to turn it in the other way. So now I'm rotating my leg this way, the whole leg, thigh bone and everything, moving in. Hips are still grounded. And then we're gonna let the leg come across the body. This leg's gonna come in for support to meet it. And again, you wanna make sure your leg is away from 90 degrees, so a little further out than what you would normally think here. We're gonna go here. Rotating inward and then pulling across just until this outside of the hip lights up and then breathe there. So connect to your breath, relax. Supporting with the other leg. Nice deep breath. Great, one more breath. We'll slowly come back up through center. Let's draw the leg in again one more time. Hold on to both sides of your strap. I'm gonna remove the strap, keep the leg in the air, flex the foot and slowly lower the leg all the way to the floor. Now I want you to straighten your other leg and just shake out a little bit. See how that feels different in this stretched leg versus the unstretched leg. 
just observe that. And then we'll do the other side. So the start leg we just stretch, we'll bend and place the foot on the floor. We're taking the strap across the ball, the other leg, and bringing that leg into the sky. Hold on to both sides of your strap. Couple breaths here. Heel up, toes down, like pretty straight. If it's too much, you can soften or move the leg out wherever you need to be. One more breath here. Great, and then we're gonna take the strap into our left hand. Again, we're gonna rotate the foot out about 45 degrees or so. Draw the other knee into your chest for support and a counterbalance. As you're ready, slowly open the legs away from the midline, staying balanced until you feel a nice enterprise stretch. And then work with your breath. Relaxing and letting go. You can support the arm, the extended leg with the arm on the ground. Again, counterbalance with the step knee. One more breath. Nice and slow, come back to center with both legs. This foot will come to the floor, walk it to the outer edge of your mat. Extended leg, strap in the other hand, rotating the foot in the other direction now. You can send the other arm out if you like. And again, we're gonna let this leg out a little further from 90 degrees. Breathe in as you're ready. Both legs will come toward the center or across the body with the top leg until that outer hip lights up. We're keeping that hip, the low back on the ground. This leg is supporting our stretch. And we're connecting to our breath. One more breath cycle. Good, slowly bring both legs back to neutral. Again, take the strap in both hands now, bring the leg a little closer. We'll take another breath cycle here. Removing the strap, leg stays in the air. Flex the foot, slowly extend all the way down. Great, send both legs out. Shake them out a little bit. Just observe how that feels. Taking a deep breath in and out. Beautiful. So from here, we're gonna come into our final resting position. So if you feel like you need any more stretching or releasing of the body, feel free to do that now. You might just bring these in the chest, give yourself a little massage. You might wanna do a happy baby. So it's nice to um, check in with yourself, see what sounds good to you and go for it, whatever you need. You might be ready just to relax. So if there's any tension in your back at all, you can let the knees stay bent and fall to the midline, feet a little wider. You might use a roll under your knees. It's a nice way to relax. You can stretch your legs all the way out. We're gonna tuck our upper arms or shoulders underneath the chest to open the heart center. 
bring your gaze straight up, allow the palms to float up to the sky, relax the hands, relax your fingers. Maybe wiggle, shake your feet out, wiggle your toes a little bit, and then relax them. You might rock your head gently side to side, make sure the neck is nice and neutral on the mat. So if you need a prop under your head, feel free to use one. Good, let's take a deep breath in through the nose. We're gonna do one more lion's breath. Open the eyes, stick out the tongue, sigh it out, make a noise. Ah. Great, relax the face, relax the brow, relax the jaw. Coming to stillness, as you relax your entire body completely. The eyes gently close, letting the mat and the earth completely support you as you relax. Relax your entire body completely. If you can spend more time here in this pose, I really encourage you to stay as long as you can. You're ready, you'll slowly just wiggle fingers and toes. Maybe rock your head a little side to side. Let's bring the arms up overhead on the floor behind you. Bring your legs together. Stretch out nice and long, stretch everything away from the navel. Nice full body stretch. Just reach through the fingers and the toes. Deep breath in, exhale as you bend your knees to place your feet on the floor and roll to the right side of your body to a fetal posture for a moment. And slowly use your left hand to push yourself back to a comfortable seat. We'll meet an easy pose, sitting up nice and tall. Noticing any changes between now and the beginning of practice. I recall if you set an intention or dedication for your practice. Let's inhale as we sweep the arms up together. Deep breath in. Seal your hands at the top. Lower them to your heart. And bow to yourself with gratitude for practicing today. We'll bow to each other. Namaste. Namaste.